this video we're going to take a look at another part of the Oracle database called a sequence. And a sequence is a way of making sure that we get unique values for something that we're going to use to uniquely identify rows inside of our database. And it solves this age-old problem of having multiple people in the database at the same time. So let's take an example, see why sequences are important. Let's say we're going to model uh, a typical invoice. Let's say I run an, you know, an online business and I want to model a typical invoice. Let's say my online business sells uh, cell phones. <laughs> so what are the types of things that we're going to see on a typical invoice? Well, we're going to have order information, you know, right at the top probably. We're going to have something like customer information. We're going to have the line items of what we bought on the invoice. Uh, we'll probably maybe have some shipping information and we'll have some billing information at the bottom of the invoice. Each one of these is going to represent probably a different table if we set up our database properly. Probably a different table inside of our Oracle database. So order info is probably going to go to this table inside of our database called orders. Customer information will be stored in customers. Line items, there'll be a line item table that holds all of our line items. And we'll have ship to. information, and finally we'll have billing information. And these are all tables. You know, I should have done this in a different color. Darn it. I didn't think about it. Should have did it in a different in a different color, but too late now. So these are all tables inside of my Oracle database. I'm going to need something that kind of ties all of these things together to make them unique. So chances are, I'm definite, chances are we're going to have something like an order ID field inside of orders. Inside of line items, I'm going to tie that. I'm going to probably tie that back. And again, I'll have order ID of order ID. And in each one of these guys, I'm going to have some kind of order ID that ties back to my actual order. I have to make sure that this number, as it gets generated inside my database, I'm not going to do this manual. I'm going to have this generated, you know, sequentially. I'll start with, you know, 1000, 1001, 1002, 1003. And the age-old problem that comes along with this is we don't know how long it's going to take for me to actually complete this order, to generate this invoice, to go through all of the steps on the process. And especially if I'm running, you know, an online business, I'm going to have a PC. I'm going to have PCs, you know, if my, my business is doing well, I'm going to have PCs all over the world accessing my online system all at the same time. And again, I don't know if the order takes two minutes to process. I don't know if it takes three minutes to process. I'm going to have a lot of concurrency here. I'm going to have a lot of people doing orders on my system all at the exact same time. And if I'm not careful, if I don't have a mechanism set up, I'm going to duplicate these numbers. And that's the last thing I want to do. I want to make sure that everybody who comes in gets a unique order number, even if they don't complete the order. Even if they go through the whole process, they get right to the point of putting in their billing information, and at the last minute they go, ah, you know what, I'm not going to buy this. I'm, I'm going to just back out of the order and I'm going to cancel it. We never want these numbers to be shared between different orders. We want to make sure that every user that comes in here comes into my online store gets a unique number. And again, I'm going to use that number. I'm going to use that order ID all over the place. i got to make sure that when the transaction completes, I can update all this information. There's even other stuff on my invoice that I probably don't have, uh, I don't even have modeled on my invoice that I'm going to uh, you know, want to maintain information on. I probably have warehouse information. I want to update that. And, you know, I might want to tie the order ID back to the warehouse. I might have, you know, a data warehouse where I'm looking at 
information about where orders come from. I might want to store the order ID in that guy also. So I'm going to use this unique order ID all over the place on my system. And I got to make sure that even as somebody comes through, if it takes them 30 seconds to process an order, if it takes them 30 minutes, if they back out an order, everybody who's coming in here on a concurrent basis gets a unique order ID. We never want to. We never want it to be so that we duplicate order IDs because that could definitely cause problems all over the place. So sequences were created to kind of solve this age-old transactional problem and creating sequences and using them are actually pretty easy. So I'm going to hop into SQL Plus now, or SQL Developer, excuse me, and we're going to create this new sequence. So if I use SQL Developer to do this, I have a number of ways of doing it. I can use the wizard that's built into SQL Developer or I can use uh, just create the actual SQL statements to go ahead and create a sequence. I'm going to use the wizard just to show you all the different options that are out there. <coughs> and then we can look at the DDL, the actual um, statements to create a sequence at the very end. So if I create new sequence here, uh, you can see that this HR user has a couple of sequences built already. And you don't have to call them with an underscore SEQ, but it makes it easy when you're looking at your database and you're trying to figure out what's going on. If you're giving them, if you give them a meaningful name, so I'm just going to call this one test, t e s t, t e s t underscore s e q. We have all of these different options that are available. So would, what, how much do we want the sequence to increment by every time I get a new sequence? Do I want it to increase by 1? Do I want it to increase by 50? Uh, we can set it up here. The default is 1. That's probably what you're going to use most of the time. Min and max values. I can set it to say I want it to start at 1,000, and maybe I never want to get higher than 10,000 for whatever reason. If I leave max value out, uh, it's basically unlimited. There is this upper range number that's like 2.5 billion or something like that, or 2.5 trillion. But for now, I'll, I'll put the max value as uh, 9999. What number do I want to start with? Well, I want to start with 1,000, which is my minimum value. Do I want to cache these numbers? You can get a little bit of a performance increase uh, if you cache the numbers, and I'll cache 20 of them at a time inside a memory. So Oracle doesn't have to go out and figure out uh, what the next number is in the sequence. It can cache these things in memory and grab the next number really quickly. If you're doing a lot of transactions, a heavily transactional system, you obviously want to cache it, give you a little bit of a performance increase. You can recycle numbers. So when I hit 9999, if I click on cycle here, once I hit 9999 and I go to the next one, it'll cycle back to 1000 if I want to do it that way. Uh, I don't usually want to do that. I don't usually want to have stuff where I have the same number over and over again. Can you imagine if you had a system where you recycle the numbers with your order IDs and as soon as you got to your uh, 9000th order, it would cycle again to 1000 and you'd have multiple orders with the order ID 1000. It's not something you want to do on a normal basis. And order just says, do I want to select these in order? Do I want to make sure that they, they come sequen uh, sequentially? So I'm going to select that now. So if I want to see what the actual command is to create it, you can see that here's the command right there. Create sequence hr.testsequence increment by 1. Start with 1000, max value 9999, min value 1000, cache 20, make sure they're in order. I click on OK goes out there and it creates this test sequence for me. How do I start using sequences? Well, the nice thing about sequences is that once they're selected, nobody else can get the same value over again. So I'm going to show a quick example here of how to do it. So if we want to see the next value in my sequence, I can just say select and then the sequence name. So in this case, it's going to be hr.test underscore seq. And there's a, uh, a parameter, not a parameter that you pass, but a, basically a function that you pass that will give you the next value in the sequence. And it's called nextval. Nextval will give me the next value in my sequence, and it'll be unique. Nobody else that selects from this will get the same value. So in this case, I'm just going to select from dual. I execute the statement. And you can see there's a value of 1,000. That's what we started with. The next time I select from it, it becomes 1,001. The next time I select from it, it's 1,002. Next time I select from it, it's 1,003. So when it comes time for me to update all of these different pieces, when the order goes through, 
I can select from the sequence, make sure that I get a unique ID, and update the order ID with all of the necessary information that I get, and nobody else can get this value. Someone else working on the system concurrently who does uh, uh, who executes a command and says, okay, I'm going to finish uh, uh, my order also. They select next value, they get a completely different value. You'll never have more than one person select from that next val and get the same value. I'm going to hop in here to this and I'm I forgot who I'm logged in here. You can see I'm logged in as the IX user. So if I select hr.test underscore scc uh, next val from tool. Ah, I didn't give privileges on this. I have to give privileges on that. So let me connect as the sys user. And again this is not the best way to do it but now I get 1006. I come back in here. I select the value again. Whoops, I'm not on the right line. So I click on next value from dual. You can see now I get 1007. If I go here, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then I select it from here, then I get 13. So I didn't have to commit any transactions. I didn't have to roll back any transactions. This is just a real nice way of making sure that you always get a unique value for uh, something that requires a unique value inside your database, like order ID or customer ID or employee ID. And so this statement can be used inside of an insert statement. It can be used inside of an update statement, a delete statement, a select statement. Uh, you can use this just about anywhere. There's also a different parameter that, that you can pass called current value. Current value will return the current value, but it doesn't increment anything. So if I select current value here, you can see I get 1013. I can execute it over and over again. It's always 1013, 1013, 1013. If I then execute this guy where I get 14, 15, 16, because this is executing next val, so now I should be up to 22. I select and now I get 10. That's interesting. Still get 1013 here. Now it comes back with 1022. So then I can to my current value, and you can see that it stays at 1022 forever. It never changes. So sequences are really good for getting unique information out of a database and making sure that you have a ne unique value. And again, this is without doing any commits or rollbacks inside your database. Because if we look at this scenario where we have a whole bunch of people logging on to my site, we never know if they're going to complete the order or not. We never know how long the order is going to take. It might take, like I said, 30 seconds to go through, or it might take 30 minutes to go through. But we want to make sure that they always get a unique order ID as part of the transactional processes. And sequences are a real nice, easy way for you to do that.